<clears throat> Hi again, this is Pete Gerlach with part two of two videos uh, that come from lesson two in the uh, nonprofit website Break the Cycle. Lesson two is about improving your communication skills. This video continues with a set of things that block effective communication. If you haven't seen part one yet, please do that and then come back here. The next common block, uh, communication block, is too much or too little eye contact. You probably already know that, uh, but how often, if you experience that, what is too much eye contact, by the way? You ever got somebody bore in on you like that? That can often make people uncomfortable. The other possibility is that people are talking to you, but they're looking off into space or looking at another person or looking at their feet. That often uh, sends an invisible message saying, I'm scared of you. Uh, I don't want to look at you if something upsetting about you. There's lots of possibilities, but the, the point is, um, other than clear, steady, friendly eye contact, either too much or too little, or too erratic, can cause reactions in you, emotional, mental reactions, that disturbs and blocks effective communication. Are you aware of your eye contact in important communication? Do you know what to do if you're not getting enough eye contact from your partner? Um, if you're if you got a problem with eye contact, sometimes you will become emotional or um, feel disturbed, and your E level will go up. If you haven't seen the video on that, let me quickly explain. Uh, we all are emotional people, except people who are very wounded and very numb. Uh, our emotions fluctuate all the time between low and high, all kinds of emotions, like the colors on a palette, painter's palette. <clears throat> we can say figuratively that when we're calm, our emotion level is, quote, below our ears, so we can hear, okay, hear, hear our partner. If by chance something happens and we get excited uh, in some way, some uh, emotion blooms, our E-levels can be said to be above our ears. When that happens, we can't hear very well or at all. So often, people who are talking on an emotionally important subject, one or both partners' E-levels will go up, and either the partners don't notice it, or if they do, they experience their partners not hearing them very well, and they escalate. They try and talk louder and faster. That does not solve the problem. My point here is, as you talk in important situations, be aware of where your and your partner's E-levels are, below the ears or above. If you feel yours are above, say, excuse me, I can't talk to you right now. There is an antidote for high E-levels it's a skill uh, from Lesson 2 in the Break the Cycle website. It's called Empathic Listening. When you do empathic listening to your partner, which is saying back what you think they think they've said and they're feeling, E-levels tend to come down. So a common barrier I've observed in many troubled couples in my work as a therapist in everyday life is people don't ask each other for what I call hearing checks. That sounds like, could you say back what you just got from me? Um, it can be misinterpreted as an insult. If you mean it genuinely and not as a manipulation, giving a hearing check spontaneously or asking for one can be a great help. It will help bring down high E-levels. Another communication barrier that I've seen frequently, as recently as yesterday in talking with the client, is vague pronouns. 
Have you ever experienced somebody when you're talking with them and you're trying to focus in and perhaps solve a problem? And they repeatedly say, well, it's no good, or they said, or I don't know if we can uh, get this past them, or we got to work on this issue. You may know what the other person means by those things. You may also misunderstand because those pronouns are very general and they're very vague. We have to solve it. What is it? Um, we have to address this. This is one of my favorites. Well, we have to address that. Uh, exactly what do you mean by address? Talk about? Discuss? Trial solutions? Write it down? Put it up for a vote? What, what is address? What does that mean? So be alert for vague pronouns. You may use them. A partner may use them. Uh, if you encounter them in your partner, don't be afraid to ask. Hold it. I'm not clear what you're saying. What do you mean by it? Or who is they? They will get better at this. Or they ought to. Who is they? Um, don't be shy about asking for clarification. You may help the other person get clearer also. Um, so that's a barrier, a communication barrier to be aware of. How about this one? Have you ever been trying to focus in on an important communication subject and your partner, for his or her own reasons, uh, suddenly brought up a new subject? Well, you know, that reminds me. I remember the last Thursday. What? Blah, 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 blah. You don't want to talk about last Thursday. You want to talk about uh, the fire hazard in your leisure home, if you have one. Or where's your missing pet? Or what are we going to do about our bank overdraft? Um, often when someone brings up a different subject or starts bringing up old problems, um, especially when you're in combat conflict with a, a, another person, and if they're feeling blamed or judged, a frequent defense mechanism is to say, well, yeah, you know, you're not so great because you remember when you blah, 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 they will change the subject and defocus. Uh, that's a killer because it leaves you with the first topic that you were working on unfinished. And you probably have a set of emotional reactions to their changing the subject, which may cause your E-level to go up. So be alert for accidental or defensive topic changes. Uh, if your partner changes the topic, either unconsciously or intentionally, you have the right, I propose, to say, hold it, I'm not done with what we were talking about. I'd like to go back to that right now. Uh, that's called an assertion. You have every right to do that. Have you ever had somebody um, start to tell you how you ought to live your life? or how you want to do a certain thing. You know, if you really want to clean your rug, what you have to do is blah, 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 blah. Uh, you, recall, you recall how that feels when someone, especially with a certain face expression or voice tone, which sometimes turns out to be arrogant or egotistical. Um, you know, I really know how to detail a car. Uh, apparently you're uh, just a beginner at it. You know, let me give you some tips. Sometimes that may be welcome information if it is sent with a respectful attitude. If it is sent with, I'm a one-up person to you, let me tell you how to do it, whatever it is. Uh, let, me know, let me tell you how to pray. I, I really know how to pray, but apparently you don't. That's called lecturing. At least that's what I call it. And I encourage you to be alert for that in a compassionate way. People, other people usually don't mean to lecture. Your intention is probably good, but they're not aware of what they're doing. They're not aware of the relationship message they're sending, which is one up, meaning you're one down, instead of equal equal. So be alert to a feeling of I'm being lectured to. If that happens, 
an option you have is to say, excuse me, I'm really feeling lectured at by now, rather than saying, you're lecturing me. Your lecturing me is an attack. I'm feeling lectured right now by you is a report, and you are the best person on earth to report how you're feeling. So be alert for lectures or moralizing or preaching as you're communicating in important topics with certain people. It's really easy for parents, by the way, to lecture kids, right? It's a fine line between instructing and guiding and lecturing. Lecturing and flooding tend to go together, by the way. Have you noticed that? Here's another one. Um, there are several people in my family who, are, who choose to be extremely busy all the time. And when they talk to me or uh, attempt to talk to me, often they're doing two things at once. They're driving a car, they're washing dishes, uh, they're tending children, they're maybe talking intermittently with another person in the room, you know, blah, 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 blah. Hey, what do you think about blah, 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 blah. I don't know how that is for you, but it really feels distracting and somewhat disrespectful to me. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it could be different if you are doing it or the other person is doing it without realizing it. If someone does that to you, an option you have is to say, excuse me, I'm really feeling a little frustrated that you're, find, you're trying to focus on two things at once. I'd really appreciate your full attention for the next few minutes. Can you do that? You have options here. You don't have to endure it. Okay? Another uh, and final communication block I want to mention to you is something that can be called hand grenade words. I bet you, like most of us, react strongly to certain emotionally loaded words. You probably have your own inventory of these words. For instance, rape, um, screw up, failure, nigger, kike, uh, raghead. Words like that that are uh, pejorative or highly emotionally charged. Uh, you're an abuser. You're, that's abusive. You're abusing me said with a certain face gesture and voice tone, those words are explosive. They cause strong emotional reactions, often defensiveness, guilt, resentment, hurt, anger. Your E-level goes up, your hearing stops, communication goes down the chute. Be aware of either yourself using hand grenade words or your communication partner un, um, unconsciously using words that cause a strong reaction in you. If that happens, it's okay to stop and say so. Excuse me, that word really stirs me up. I have to calm down for a minute. Give me a moment or something. These are several more of the almost 20 common communication blocks that as a student of communication for 40 years I have witnessed over and over and over again. The key is lack of awareness. People don't know what their process is. And ignorance. They don't know these are communication barriers. And even if they do, they don't know what to do about them. I urge you to study the Lesson 2 videos in YouTube, and even better, study Lesson 2 itself in the Break the Cycle website. It's free. There are no ads, no commercials. I'm selling nothing but knowledge. I hope you'll try it out. Thanks for watching.